everybody, I'm Roxy and this is Rick Me BS. So today I'm here with glasses. I think the reflection today is not a problem. Maybe it is. I, I, I always doubt that. Either way, I was looking for one of the books I read these past days and I didn't find it. And I was so sure I had left it X place and then I went there and it wasn't there. It threw me off a bit. <laughs> but anyways, here is my second um, winter TBR wrap up. I've had a hard time finishing books. So we'll see how that goes. The first book that I read since the last video was The White Window, which is the third book in the Lemonade Snicket series, A Series of Unfortunate Events. Um, this was amazing. I think it's my favorite one yet. At first I thought it was called The White Widow, which it's a nice title, completely different situation, scenario. They go to their third guardian. She fears everything. She has a lot of phobias and she lives near a cliff. It's very interesting. I think the depiction of the character of the guardian here is very interesting, very dark and uh, just very complex. It talks a little without going into much detail, of course, because it's a middle grade series, but but what it is like to live with mental disorders, and I think that was really interesting and done very well. Then I read the first installment. I don't know if there are more of these out yet, but this is the first installment in the graphic novels of Dexter by Marvel. I haven't read the books, I have watched like the first season of the show. It's a good show, I love Dexter's character, I think it's very interesting. Not the most accomplished psychopath, but I still like the show, I still like the character. This however was pretty meh, I enjoyed it as part of the Dexter world. I was pretty alright. The case was like, okay, this is typical Dexter. Although the writing here is terrible. The writing is done by Jeff Lindsay and he's a, like a mystery writer or something, but the writing here is terrible. I hated the dialogue. I hated the inner voice of, inner Dexter voice. I didn't like it. I thought it was like nothing I don't know, it just didn't make sense to me, and the art was decent, nothing out of this world, so yeah, this was like a pretty lame read to me. I did enjoy it, I did enjoy it, but only as part of the Dexter universe, so I wouldn't recommend this. Then I read, and I'm really excited about this, How Much Land Does a Man Need by Leo Tolstoy. This book, this little book you see here, it's part of the Little Black Book collections. I ordered the special box set, it comes with the first 80 books in the series, they are all really short like this ones, and the selection is great. I, I have also purchased uh, five others that are not in the first 80 and I have made, made a to buy list with the other books that I want to get. If you want to check this out I'm going to link the uh, book depository uh, link down below. I'm not an affiliate so it's not about that, just so you can check it out. Okay, this one. Oh my god, Leo Tolstoy is a genius. It's like the, the second story, there are two stories here. Um, the second story is kind of dull, but the first one, How Much Land Does Man Need, is like a parable. It's very interesting about ambition and tempting fate, and that's all I'm going to say. The thing is that the situations in both stories are so common, you'd think nobody would read this and find it interesting, but the way he constructs the plot and the choice of words and everything else makes this really masterful. Also, How Much Land Does a Man Need is considered by James Joyce, it said it so here, by James Joyce to be the greatest story in the whole world, so that's huge. And I wouldn't say it's like the best story ever, but it is a really good story. Then I read the, well this is sort of a reread, but still, uh, volumes seven and eight in the Gravitation manga series. I've been into manga uh, much more than anime uh, since I was in like fifth grade. Back then I read them all in my computer and since then I got the first uh, six and then I said okay I should go back to collecting them and I did. I just love this series. I couldn't write this series because this series are 
so close to my heart that even though I can admit that they are not like the best manga series, I wouldn't recommend them just to anybody. I still just, uh I love these characters so much. This is about Shuichi and Yuki. Uh, Shuichi is a um, wannabe singer and he's crazy, he's this energetic fluffball and Yuki is a writer with a past and of course they sort of fall in love but it's complicated I love the art here, the art is great but it's a lot of wacky anime like old time anime kind of stuff like a lot of normal that people go out in set constant costumes or are shot and not and do not die, stuff like that, that don't really make sense if you've read like Excel Saga or even if you've watched Oren Host Club it's sort of like that so yeah then I read, this is the book I can't find, and I'm so sad because I wanted to show you because I wrote on that book, like literally wrote and highlighted parts, so I just wanted you to see that. I don't know if it's alone on the beach at night or alone on a beach at night. Either way, this is the book, I'm going to leave the cover here, by Walt Whitman. This is a selection of poetry from his like most well-known poetry book, Leaves of Grass, which I haven't read yet. It was my first Walt Whitman ever. I have a dark story with poetry because I'm very dense for hidden meanings. Going to university and studying literature has helped me be better at that. Still, I'm very dense with poetry. I adore this too. I thought it was really, really fun. Uh, it had so many beautiful passages and I wanted to read you one of the first passages there was a whole poem called to you and it was one of the most beautiful things I have ever read so yeah this poetry book was amazing and it made me want to read leaves of grass so probably it, it, it did its job it got the job then so yeah then I finished this is the edition in Spanish I got it from the library this is the book of illusions by Paul Oster um this is my second Paul Oster I enjoyed this definitely much more than the first one. Yeah, Paul Oster, he's very college isn't he? He's like, he lacks originality, he's very proper in his writing in the sense, not in the sense like he doesn't write bad words or anything, no, proper in the sense that it's all very okay, like writing workshop, creative writing courses. Still this story was very interesting. So this book is about David, a guy who loses his family in a plane crash and he has survivor guilt and he's like really really in a dark place when he watches this silent film that made his, makes him laugh for the first time since the tragedy and um, it, it turns out to be Hector Mann, an actor who was like a big deal but not that much of a big deal back then, he did comedy, he was really really a great actor uh, but he disappeared so the, he starts to research about his movies and he publishes a book about them. A couple of years later he gets a letter um, saying that Hector wants to meet him because he read the book. The most interesting part of this is Hector definitely, I mean they talk about his story and although it goes telenovela very quickly, uh, it, it has some beautiful parts. It's not like the greatest deal, like it did like a 3.5 which is good, I enjoyed it but it was, it didn't reach like, the 4 star mark. David's character flat though, the other characters are more interesting but the ending was kind of like <gasps> I, I, I would recommend this for some people if you think it's interesting you might want to check it out after that oh I finished this book and the only joy it brought me was the knowledge that I was one book closer to finishing the pop sugar challenge because other than that I hated it and I'm sorry because I know a lot of people do love this book but I'm going to insult it right now because I really hated it and this is Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. Uh, okay, so in case you don't know this, well, I was talking about how I was going to jump on this bandwagon quite late, and then I wish I hadn't. Yeah. The best thing about this book is that this edition is quite lovely. It's, look at that flop. It's, it's so nice. And it smells incredible. Other than that, uh, it's about a guy in a dystopian future where everything is bad. Somehow, even though there are a lot of different crises, there is this genius software called Oasis. It's free. The only thing 
is that you need to pay to like move around and buy stuff but you can get stuff either way you can get by without ever putting a cent into this and most of human interaction now occurs in oasis which is kind of interesting uh this guy he's poor he's a teenager he's an orphan and he's really fascinated with 80s culture because the creator of uh, Oasis apparently didn't live beyond the 80s. Everything he liked, everything he listened to, everything he watched was 80s stuff and apparently he knew them by heart and people, normal people were supposed to know them too. I, well the, the guy, the creator of Oasis dies and he leaves treasure hunt and the one who wins the treasure hunt is going to be his heir and is going to have like oasis and of course this guy enters a competition and becomes a gunter and he's like the best at it even though he has no money he has nothing going for him he somehow is the first person to decipher the first challenge and that's it after like five years <sighs> this is so predictable this is why a for people who were born in the 80s because it's it's not filled with references it's plagued with them like if I did this references would be purring down I have no problem with it being geeky it's just that it's a bad book it's written poorly the first few pages it was like interesting then all the freaking this guy cannot write this guy cannot set a scene the only thing he does is link like says okay this looked like something that it was in this movie and so you should know that and that is all the descriptive process seriously this guy is just uh, uh. this has like anime levels of feeling tons of things that have no influence in the plot just lifestyle porn and it was predictable every plot twist it was supposed to have i'm going to leave you my review because because I was more coherent there than now, but that's it. I don't even want to keep talking about that book. I'm, I'm going to make it disappear somehow. I'm really, I hate it. Ready Player One. I hated it completely. And I know a lot of people are going to hate me for that opinion. I understand like why people enjoyed it, but because it's like, oh, the feels, but it's not in the premise. Oh, bye. I hope uh, you have a very nice week. Um, if you like this video please give a thumbs up subscribe down below check out the spanish channel check out the facebook page and have a great reading week so see you next time i'm tired and i want to I need to go out oh. my foot oh sorry i leave i need to find it because all these little books they have numbers for example uh, this one how much land does a man need is number 57 and i need to okay i'm sorry it just it really upset me i have to give it back and i don't know where i will have time to do it but i need it i need to go because if not i will have to pay a fine and i have never ever paid a fine proper in the sense that it's so very i dare anyone who likes this book to make fun of Twilight and I'm not defending Twilight I'm really not really I'm, I just can't talk about this anymore I'm too mad ah!